Okay. Uh, welcome, everybody. This is Anthony White. Uh, I, uh, I work at the University of Michigan. I happen to be serving at present as the, uh, the IMS Caliper Working Group Chair. Uh, today, I also have uh, Aaron Silvers, and I'll turn the mic over to Aaron to, uh, to introduce himself. Hi, everybody. Uh, Anthony already said my name. Uh, I'm with the uh, currently with the Data Interoperability Standards Consortium, or DISC for short, so you don't have to get into that tongue twister. Um, we are a not for profit that is uh, basically a trade organization that's help, helping ADL expand. API from an applied research and development project into a more common industry de jure standard. Uh, we're helping with software conformance, uh, software certification programs, and uh, special certification programs to help promote data. Great. Uh, so today, the purpose of the purpose of this presentation is to provide a high level overview of. Uh, of both the Caliper and the X API specifications. There are two emergent specifications in the uh, learning analytics space. And so we thought we'd uh, engage in an hour long conversation uh, discussing the two specifications. Uh, and then, of course, entertain questions. From my perspective, I have no objection. Uh, I actually didn't ask Aaron about this. I have no objection if people want to interrupt us during the course of this hour to, to, ask a, to ask a question if you've got one. Um, so I, from my perspective, don't feel like you have to wait until the, uh, the, end, of the, the end of this presentation to, uh, to pose a question. If you've got something on your mind and you wanna pose it, just, uh, just butt in, because this, this should just be a, really a conversation between, uh, uh, between all of us on this call. Uh, just quickly glancing at the list before, uh, before I switched into into the slide views here, uh, there's a lot of people on this list who um, uh, together uh, comprise a great deal of intellectual capital uh, that would be great um, to tap into uh, as we uh, discuss as we discuss these two specifications. So so please uh, feel free to uh, uh, to jump in. Uh, although I will try to keep this thing moving so that because we only do have an hour. So let's go ahead and um, and uh, get started with this. The first thing I, I wanted to to uh, to talk about, uh, along with Aaron, is really the value proposition of the of these two specs. Uh, from my perspective, you know, why XAPI, why Caliper, why why bother taking an hour out of your day to to listen to to us talk about these two things? Um, from my perspective, there's there's three overriding um, considerations to the value proposition. Uh, the first one is, from my perspective, uh, is the promotion of interoperability. And not just interoperability uh, from a data perspective, so the exchanging of data between systems, but also semantic interoperability. What I mean by that is the exchange of meaning between systems. Uh, and that's a key, it's certainly a key driver uh, for Caliper, uh, and I think too for XAPI. Second is, um, I think both specs position themselves as enablers, as enablers for innovation. Uh, if you, you know, if you look at the specs closely, um, they, to a certain extent, are, are low level, um, and they anticipate the uh, the construction of services on top of the streams that they help orchestrate. So as data is pushed. Uh, pushed to endpoints, as we'll call them, or learning record stores or data stores or wherever you need to um, push the data that has been um, uh, specified as either uh, in an XAPI or a Caliper format, the opportunity exists to uh, construct services on top of that stream, uh, to ask all kinds of interesting questions about the, the events or the statements that are being transmitted. Uh, and then third, uh, Playing off that really is is the is the idea that uh, you know the construction of these services um, allows one to actually feed um, or generate insights you know insights through the application say of an algorithm uh, to your stream uh, intelligent listeners reasoning agents as we call them here at the University of Michigan uh, and if one can overlay uh, 
overlay these kinds of uh, these kinds of approaches to these streams, uh, especially streams that are blended from a from a uh, uh, from a variety of applications that previously where the data has been siloed. Um, it opens up opens up great opportunities um, for you know both innovation and and insights into the sort of patterns and behaviors that can be discerned across this data. Uh, Aaron, is there anything else you'd like to add to uh, to what I've had to say so far on this? Absolutely, Anthony. So, I first of all, I think Anthony's put these value proposition statements like really, really. Uh, he stated them very, very well. And I think they really speak to the overarching goals of you know the aims of you know how X API caliper should be viewed. But there's also I think some other more other very pragmatic considerations that we need to think about in terms of other value of propositions for going with either of these approaches. One of them is, uh, and it's not it's not very high minded, but it is about it is pragmatic in that it's about cutting costs. Um, the reason why people are adopting X API caliper is very similar to why people adopt any. Uh, they want to re drive down the costs because there's a lot of costs in doing innovative things uh, that are standalone, and particularly around not just the creation of everything brand new again in every single product or every single app that you use, but there's also the idea of the fact that you eventually want these different tools and different systems talking with each other and exchanging information in the same way. Um, so the better that we can help improve the consistency of how uh, people try to do similar types of things uh, and the more reliable we can we can have faith in the systems that you know these ecosystems that are created of different services working with each other sharing data amongst each other those things help drive uh, you know tangible value in terms of Cost of operation, the cost of acquisition, cost of development, all of those things come up. This is another way of, of looking at the value proposition um, that uh, Aaron and, and Megan actually worked up. And as you can see, besides just the um, you know the opportunities of of, of driving the data from diverse sources towards a, a common endpoint or a learning record store again the idea that you can that you can uh, that you can both orchestrate the stream and then interrogate the stream in order to uh, in order to engage and generate useful analytics uh, perhaps to um, develop uh, uh, interventions uh, adaptive applications uh, personalization predictive algorithms, et cetera. All of that offers, um, I think, a, a great compelling reason why uh, these both of these specs are relevant at this particular time within sort of the history of, of, of learning technologies. Agreed. Uh, one, one additional use case is that I would just put out there is by setting up this, these mechanisms to describe not only the format of the data, but also to describe what, how and where the data moves around. It enables data to flow to a number of places, you know, when needed, not necessarily just like it's all going into one box, never to, never to be seen again. And that allows for the possibilities of having things like personal data stores and is of working with Learning record warehouses that make use of uh, you know, all more data sets or larger quantities of data sets, whatever. So let's turn our attention just to current initiatives on in both on both of these projects. So that, you know, one of the things is beyond just the the general value proposition, which I hope you guys have found at least reasonably or moderately compelling. Um, is that we do have two active projects, two active communities, uh, and I think it's it's worth briefing you on what we're doing as of as of this this point in time. 
So I'll turn it over to uh, to Aaron to to outline uh, what X what the XAPI community is up to. Uh, just sure. Patrick here, Aaron. Yeah. Um, we are losing you a little bit. I don't know if you are wandering away from the mic or what's happening, but if you could just try and um, be a bit closer to it, that would be really good. I'm literally holding the microphone right in front of my face. <laughs> Maybe if you eat the microphone. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but I. Better now? Yes, I think so. Um, we'll yeah. just have to go with it. Yeah, keep talking. Um, so uh, a little bit over a week ago now, uh, we released the uh, conformance uh, requirements for the, AD, for the XAPI specification. The spec itself has been instructive in terms of telling people what to do and how to do it in terms of adopting XAPI and to form the development of learning record stores. Um, but there needs to be kind of a check on implementation to make sure that we're all interpreting what, XA, what the specification instructs us to do the same way. And so these conformance requirements are kind of like the baseline that, that will be used or developing testing systems to make sure that you know, that learning record stores, for example, are all doing things exactly as we, as a community, have defined them to be done. Um, and that that helps us that that helps us then start to develop you know quality assurance practices, certification programs, etc. So. Currently, what's happening, and I'll just skip really quick to the, to the bottom data conformance suite. Um, ADL is, uh, I think, days away from releasing uh, a conformance test suite for learning record stores based on these testing for these requirements. Um, and so that's going to be a very useful tool in helping to ensure that XAPI adoption is happening, you know, Truly interoperable way, um, at least amongst other XAPI adopters. Um, what were what was released earlier this year, I think around March of this year, was a companion specification around vocabulary. And this was ADL. This was the first attempt from the community to put together a formal paper that describes kind of the semantic practices, best practices that we should make use of. Uh, Given the spec, given where the spec is today in its current version, so these are things that are, are largely that are certainly out there now or on the cusp of being released. Latest developments for XAPI. I think it's a, I think it's also important to to give a nod. I don't know how many people are um, aware of this. Uh, I just as I was finishing up my slides. Uh, Last last night um, and uh, surfing around, uh, I saw this press release. It's just hot off the wire. Um, it uh, you know it involves uh, the UK JISC's National Learning Analytics Service. This is a service that um, is being built on top of uh, a Perio a variety of Perio software initiatives. And uh, one of the uh, uh, members of the Imperial community, Unicon, has j just announced um, through a press release that they have uh, they successfully delivered um, a number of uh, components of this service. Uh, and I think that uh, and and of course the this uh, National Learning Analytics Service implements XAPI, and I think it's worth a worth a shout out to uh, uh, to tie Imperio into some of the activities that are taking place uh, uh, within the, the broad XAPI community. So this is, this I think is some, it's exciting news because it's, uh, it, it demonstrates the, um, the opportunities implicit in the implementation of these specifications with, within, from my perspective as, a, as, a, as from the University of Missi Michigan, uh, the application of these, uh, of these specifications within a higher ed context. So this is this is pretty exciting news from from my standpoint, especially as it um, involves and ties into Aperio's uh, learning analytics uh, strategic vision. So I thought I'd, I'd slip that in. I should also note 
uh, that here at the University of Michigan, we are actually using Aperio's, <clears throat> Aperio's OpenLRS um, as a sort of production pilot endpoint. Uh, we we have instrumented a number of uh, a number of uh, of local homegrown applications uh, in order for them to emit caliper events, and that da those data streams are flowing towards uh, uh, the Aperio OpenLRS. Uh, so again, um, we are we are taking uh, we are leveraging um, you know Aperio's intellectual capital in this in this area. Uh, as far as Caliper goes, um, the kind of latest initiatives that we're engaged in, we um, we released a, a 1.0 version of the spec back, back in October of 2015. Uh, we're currently working on uh, Caliper 1.1. Uh, there are several swim lanes uh, uh, listed here. I won't go through all of them, but the but I what I one thing that I will want to say is is we are um, we are rewriting our spec from from uh, top to bottom, and I will say that. Uh, the inspiration, in part, from that from that rewrite, has a lot to do with the uh, with the kind of documentation that the XAPI community is is now producing, both in terms of their spec, where their spec is located. Uh, uh, for example, it's it's uh, it's uh, it's in an open repository and GitHub uh, ADL's companion companion specification, which uh, which Aaron just referred to. Uh, also, their vo the vocabularies, so their attempts to uh, begin to uh, define more rigorously. Uh, controlled vocabularies, profiles, and practices uh, for the XAPI community. Uh, practices for the XAPI community to um, uh, to begin to implement uh, in a more formal way uh, re their recipes and their profiles. We've drawn a lot of inspiration from XAPI in the work that we're doing uh, today. Um, I will say um, that we we are making some revisions to our event model. We're extending it. We'll talk about that in a, in a few minutes. Um, we also, uh, IMS also provides a certification suite uh, in order for uh, IMS members uh, who are interested in conformance to, to test their, their individual events against the, the various profiles uh, that are defined in, within the Caliper information model. Uh, and then we also provide a number of, um, sorry for those alerts from my, uh, from my mail, uh, if you can see those popping in. Uh, we also provide a number of reference implementations written in, in a number of, of languages uh, like Caliper, Caliper Java or Caliper Ruby uh, in order to uh, both encourage um, and facilitate adoption uh, by sort of providing a, providing a bit of a jump off ramp for those um, who are beginning to engage with the specification. So we, we do make, uh, and, and I know that uh, uh, the XAPI community does uh, does similar work as well, making uh, making code available for people to um, uh, to help them both educate themselves in in, in, in terms of the stack and ramp them up uh, quicker. So we're doing that kind of work there. And then of course the the other the other point is that you know one advantage of, of being associated with with IMS is that we have this uh, sibling specification, which you may have heard of, learning tools interoperability, uh, and we uh, given the the, the, the closeness within uh, within within the two specs, we're able to actually um, now piggyback off LTI uh, in in terms of of passing passing caliper specific uh, information during uh, during launch requests for for any kind of tool that's uh, enabled uh, an LTI enabled tool. We're not dependent on the LTI spec, um, but we do take advantage of it. And so that's some of the work that we're doing right now. We're hoping that uh, there is a quarterly meeting in early November. Uh, that we arrive there with a uh, with a draft 1.1 spec uh, and at least a number of the uh, sensors uh, updated to 1.1 to uh, as well as a certification suite ready to go and then hopefully we'll get uh, the 1.1 uh, spec to the public before uh, before the end of the year. I also want to note um, that there are actually conversations beginning to take place between the, the, the two communities. Uh, we do have two specs. Uh, which uh, I would argue are complementary in nature, um, but they but they do overlap in ways, and they and they do uh, they do occupy a, uh, a similar a similar space uh, within um, within this burgeoning um, uh, analytics uh, initiative within within higher education. There was a meeting between ADL and IMS at uh, Utah Valley University back in August. Uh, there's a link there to. Uh, 
it's a it's a sum it's a it's a rough summary of the review from the IMS perspective, uh, in which we be in which representatives from the XAPI community and the Calper community, you know, threw the two specs up on the wall and began to to look at where um, where there may be opportunities for uh, uh, interoperability opportunities, integration opportunities, maybe even convergence down the road. We'll talk about that in a few minutes, but I just wanted to wanted to let you know that uh, that uh, that the two specs. Um, uh, are engaged in some friendly conversations right now. Where that where that will lead, uh, uh, time will tell. Uh, what I wanted to turn to now is uh, is the uh, topic of of profiles um, from a caliper standpoint. Uh, the profiles uh, are, represent um, they're integral to the specification. Uh, in the case of XAPI, they're external to the specification. But I wanted to walk through the way that um, the way that both uh, both communities are beginning to uh, uh, provide provide controlled vocabularies and structure to to the streams of of data that they um, uh, that they provide formats for. So I'm gonna I've been speaking for the last couple of minutes. I'm gonna have Aaron jump in uh, and uh, and talk a little bit about. Uh, his his conception of, of of a profile from an XAPI perspective, and then I'll I'll give you mine. Aaron, are you still there? All right, I don't apologize. hear Aaron. Sorry. I I apologize. I was muted. Oh, okay. Uh, so at a high level. We think, I think those of us in the SAPI community think about profiles in terms of um, defining a, some, some vocabulary, uh, potentially patterns of statements that, you know, define, uh, you know, an, uh, an interaction um, that would be something that a community of practice would apply uh, in in context for those activities, so that when they are doing analysis uh, of the statements that are being collected in an LRS, that they can identify more easily uh, patterns that ha that you know have an ascribed meaning to them. Um, I think at the simple, I think that's probably the simplest way that I can explain the approach we have towards. Yeah, and similarly from the, the the caliper side. So for us, you know, what we attempt to do with our profiles, at least at this at this stage of the game, is we utilize them as a way of describing um, a discrete learning activity, or a learning uh, or an activity uh, that facilitates learning. Such as, for example, we have an outcomes profile. In which we model or describe the um, the process of grading or providing a result uh, or a score to a, a graded assignable resource. So that's in some ways of you know helping facilitate learning. You can imagine uh, lots of other profiles in that sort of realm that that you could um, construct, and we can talk about those in a few minutes. Uh, but our key sort of very concern at present is 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 describing these learning activities such as a student engaging with an assessment or a student engaging with a, a video or a, or a student engaging with a reading or a student annotating a reading those kinds of activities um, we model um, through the uh, through the pro the profile and then for us a profile is really a container a container for um, uh, for a set of concepts the relationships that exist between them, and then any rules that you might specify, or another way of looking at any constraints. In some ways, the profile, the profiles themselves, at least in the caliper context, are opinionated. Right? They provide a vocabulary, a controlled vocabulary of actions. Um, they specify certain entities that you would expect to be in play. For example, a, a learner interacting with a assessment. You've got two entities or two objects there, plus plus an action. For example, like starting an assessment. Uh, so they're they're opinionated within the within the world of of caliper and increasingly so within within XAPI uh, as well. So I think what you're going to find here is like a, uh, uh, almost a 
a design philosophy difference uh, inherent in Caliper and XAPI. Um, when, as Anthony talked about, profiles in a Caliper con context, um, they're really focused on uh, specific interactions within a controlled domain being higher ed. Um, and that's, that's great. Uh, it, it provides like a, a, a very whole, wholly formed you know, approach towards doing higher edu doing things within the higher education context. XAPI is being utilized by higher education you know, folks, but it's also being utilized by a number of other different, you, would, you might even consider calling them industry verticals. Um, and in that way, we've been admittedly, I'm sure I'm going to be shocked for saying this term, a little bit more loosey-goosey in terms of our approach to profiles uh, to date, mostly because working with the, even the concept of whether they're called recipes or profiles, there's in many times they're, they're essentially the same thing from our side, from an XAPI perspective. And what we're looking at really are like, how do people want to use XAPI in repeatable ways? And we've largely been leaving that to different communities of practice, self-identified, to define. Um, Anthony has done a great job of kind of listing out some, several of the active uh, communities of practice that are ha that are going on. And what he has listed uh, on the on the right of this slide are uh, really these different profiles or recipes that we that we have available to us. And the, the big ones, I think the ones that are probably most uh, fleshed out, uh, or at least just in terms of like their, their scope, would include things like CMI5, which is a continuation of the work that was done within AICC, now being kind of stewarded by ADL. Um, there's a SCORM profile uh, that addresses like how the translation between uh, JavaScript SCORM events, you know, through the runtime data model into, uh, into XAPI statements. And then there's a, a, what's called the actionable data book, which is an approach to working with EPUBs and XAPI. And that's being, that's a, that's a profile that's being uh, managed under IEEE. Let me move on. All right, in the, within the world of Caliper, um, we've also defined a, a set of profiles. Uh, again, what distinguishes the two specifications is really the location or the placement of profiles uh, relative to the, to the specification. So uh, within Caliper, profiles are integral to the specification. They're integral to the information model. Uh, they exist uh, ex in the, in the case of XAPI, they exist external to the specification itself. Uh, in describing the way that we've approached this, um, we have, we feel at least, at least starting from that higher ed um, .edu context, that what we, um, what we would like to, uh, to achieve with the profiles is to introduce, uh, and to introduce structure to an otherwise um, an otherwise very uh, sort of freeform, uh, free-flowing uh, event stream, uh, and work through the through the profile mechanism uh, to encourage uh, both locally, as in uh, local homegrown uh, application services and platforms, as well as those that are provided by vendors, to encourage vendors who offer similar types of offerings to adopt. The relevant set of profiles, so that we can more easily uh, merge uh, these diverse sources of of uh, event data that are emanated by different applications. So, for example, um, the University of Michigan actually uses, oh, geez, three or four different video platforms. Uh, Kaltura is one. We have a homegrown one developed by the College of of, of Engineering. Uh, and uh, and we use I think Echo 360 uh, and so on. 
Um, and what would be ideal from our perspective is first of all, we regard the data, the interaction data that's generated as a result of students interacting with those systems as our data, as the University of Michigan's data that we want back. We want it back so that we can combine it with other data sources in order to engage in, um, in more fruitful um, analytics, um, analytics work. In order to do that, um, the idea of the profile is, is if we can, if we can um, encourage, convince, conjole, or otherwise uh, make sure that these various platforms are instrumented with Caliper and apply the relevant profiles, the data that flows back to us is data that's coming in a specified format uh, with a known structure and a known controlled vocabulary, which makes the mapping costs of that data drop to nearly zero. So that's one of the big drivers for us from the, from the standpoint of, of the profiles. Um, but it's the idea, again, of, of encouraging those who are providing uh, services within this, with this, in this arena to operate from a, a sort of a known set of controlled vocabularies. In the case of Caliper, as you can see at the top, we have a, just a modest set at present, you know, assessment, forum, media, annotation, reading, so on. We also have what we call the basic profile, uh, which I'll talk about in a minute when we when I when we look at an, a caliper event. Um, the, the basic profile actually is, is rather similar or draws inspiration from XAPI, uh, and it allows one to, in a sense, construct a what we'll call a, a freeform caliper event, where the only constraints that are placed on it is that uh, you construct that event using. Um, described entities and draw your vocabulary, your action vocabulary from the caliper uh, set of 60 plus actions at this at this present. But in other words, it's a it's a, a very um, open ended um, profile, which allows people to construct um, sets of events that aren't necessarily described in the other profiles. Uh, but looking to the future, we um, uh, within the IMS community, um, there is great interest in the development of, uh, of another set of profiles uh, that deal with a, a variety of, of learning activities involving uh, activities such as um, student, student feedback, um, participation scenarios, uh, simulations, uh, social interactions, uh, surveying, uh, credentialing, such as badging, the authoring of digital resources, et cetera. So there's a variety of profiles that um, have yet um, to be uh, developed. Uh, and the profile itself from the CalPER perspective uh, to extend the model, the information model, sorry about this. Um, bring that back. Uh, can you guys see the, see the slide? Yes, we can oh, see the slide. Great, I assume yes. Oh, so so in order to extend the caliper information model, and I and by definition the specification, you either enhance an existing existing uh, profile, or you extend it by adding adding one or more new ones. Uh, that's quite different than than the model that uh, that uh, XAPI community employs, and it does represent, as as Aaron said, a, a sort of a different approach in terms of in terms of design philosophy. Are there any questions uh, at this point? We are oh, roughly 30 minutes into this presentation. Any any questions so far? All right, I'll take silence as a no, and we will continue to move on. All right, so um, we've talked we've talked about the value proposition. We have talked about um, uh, the current initiatives of both communities. We've taken a look at the way that. Uh, both communities have begun to organize uh, organize the uh, the ways that um, uh, that events can be described, uh, structured via the mechanism of profiles and recipes. Now, what we wanted to do was drop down to sort of the statement or the event level, and just quickly describe how one would um, construct. And either an XAPI statement or our Caliper event at a very high level, and we will um, deliberately avoid showing you any um, any uh, uh, JSON or JSON link LD JSON link data that Caliper uses. Uh, so you avoid having to, to to look at that. We'll keep it we'll keep it at a high level. 
So uh, comparing the two, uh, uh, the two formats between the caliper event and XAPI statement, if you look to the left, you'll see that uh, uh, they're very similar. Uh, they rely on, uh, on the uh, sort of the classic uh, data structure, uh, what's known as the triple sort of pull, drawn from RDF of the, the, the subject object predicate. In our case, the actor action object. In the case of XAPI, the actor verb object. So you've got that simple triple. Um, X, the XAPI community uh, describes it extremely well. It's capturing, it's capturing its most simplest um, at the most simplest uh, uh, level. The I did this. I did something. And in our case, at a at a particular moment in time. And then the on the right hand side, uh, the other properties um, that uh, that exist. Um, relative to the events and, and the statements from the standpoint of caliper, uh, you could see those as properties that, that attempt to decorate that triple with additional contextual information, in a sense, to nest that triple within the learning context uh, and to provide that information, you know, bind it into the event so that you can, uh, so that you can emit either an event or a statement uh, that that really provides the the base the base information that you need in order to understand why someone did something at a particular moment in time. What were the drivers? What was the context, et cetera? Is there anything else you'd like to add, Aaron, relative to the the general um, approach regarding events and statements? Yeah, I, I would just only so much as to point to the stress. You know, I think you said something really, really important as a distinction that. You know, the things that are optional in a caliper event are rooted in already in a learning context, specifically a higher education context. Where when you take a look at the XAP, the optional things under XAPI, um, they're not, they're a little bit more generic. And that was done intentionally because, for example, membership. Uh, you know, something like membership, for example, or ed app. These are things that we could put in under context or attachments. Or I think we just but, no, go ahead. But at the same time, like this kind of these, I would say, general categories in terms of the optional elements of a statement. Um, those things could also be used by the medical community or in construction and labor domains where, they're, where we're starting to see XAPI as things happen. Getting us, I would say the point being, getting us more towards performance. Yeah, I would just think, go, if you want to skip over the next slide, Anthony, and just go right into the statement. Okay, okay. Or, or I would say go past this one just in terms of time. Yes. So, right. So I'm going to, I'm going to let uh, Aaron describe this. Unfortunately, since we're looking at a PDF, normally this kind of slide we build, I build up from just a, a you know, a blank, a blank uh, sheet of white. So it makes it easier to understand uh, uh, the, uh, the elements in play, but go ahead, Aaron. Right. So in the, in the center is really the core of the, rec uh, of what's required in the statement, you know, a person, earned uh, an open badge and that open badge might has some information about the, its class um, its classification now if the system that captured this didn't put in a timestamp with that um, LRS will will throw on a time a time add a timestamp in it or as a property called stored which is required that's set by the LRS itself. Um, it, every statement that is made with XAPI needs to have a timestamp. If it doesn't come with one, one will be appointed to it, uh, so to speak. But if you take a look at the periphery around this core, the core of this statement, uh, you could see where different things kind of fall into those high-level optional categories. For example, you could, you might, you would include uh, the actual image of the badge as uh, as an attachment, 
you might identify uh, the activity that was being done and the recipe for that open badge, you know, the, the being ascribed to in the structure of the statement. Um, in the category, uh, in the category of the context activity, and um, we could look at the assertion by the badging system as a result, you know. And so, like those are, I mean, this is a very, I think, it's a really nice, tidy example of something that happens already in a caliper context. You can demonstrate from recipes for open badges in that, with XAPI how that how that kind of compares. Now, Caliper, in a sense, is, uh, you know, it starts out very similarly. Um, as you saw, we talked, uh, we made reference to the triple, the, in our case, the actor, the action, the object. This is a very minimal or basic Caliper statement. And as I said earlier, our event, it draws inspiration from, from um, the sort of very minimalist um, XAPI statement that one can construct. Again, so um, although we do place some strictures on this and that uh, the entities, the entities, uh, that um, that comprise the actor and the object uh, need to be drawn from those that are that are modeled within the specification and then then the actions vocabulary itself. But it's a very simple statement. Uh, it uh, it may be useful in an, in a real time or near real time uh, use case in which um, you simply want to event uh, or emit um, an a, a, a a, uh, an event that describes somebody starting something or completing something or pausing something. Uh, but it doesn't tell you a whole lot about uh, the motivations um, or that context in which this, this statement takes place. And that's why Caliper, Caliper actually provides a whole set of properties. Again, I would have built this up from, from a sort of a blank slate. Uh, it would make it easier to, to really grasp. But again, if you look at that, that, that sort of core triple, in this particular case, it's a person or a learner tagging a document. Um, there's additional information that you can um, that you can decorate that triple with um, within the caliper event model. Uh, in this particular example, um, they've tagged a document. It might be it might be useful to actually send along the tags that they actually chose. So we can we can reference that they've generated a set of tags. So we have a generated property. Um, it would there's probably value in understanding what is the context, the group context in which this is taking this this act activity is taking place. In this particular case, um, the context is typed as a course. Uh, that's the group context. Uh, the membership um, the membership context. So that the, the person's associated with that with that group and what's their role. You can pass that information along. You can pass the reference to the the actual platform or service in which this activity is being served up or is taking place. Obviously, you would provide a, um, a timestamp for when this is happening. You can also pass along a reference to the session. Uh, Caliper events are also, for 1.1, they're equipped with an extensions property. Uh, we don't assume that we have modeled, <clears throat> that we have modeled uh, uh, sufficient, uh, sufficient metadata that you may want to pass along. So the extensions property exists for you to extend the, the event with additional properties, if, if that's so required. And I should also note that each entity uh, as well is, is uh, equipped with a, an extensions property. So for example, the document, the document uh, entity uh, contains just a very thin set of properties, really just, just metadata uh, that you can pass along relative to, to that particular entity or object, but you can also extend that um, through the mechanism of, the, of that property. And also that final, um, that final, the federated session. That's a, that's a, uh, that is a associated with um, with learning tools oper interoperability uh, and an event that uh, that's generated as a result of an LTI launch in which you have a <clears throat> the sort of classic use case is a learning management system um, that is loosely uh, coupled with a with another service or another app, and <clears throat> when a learner uh, first logs into that LMS, they establish a session. That's sort of like the outbound session, and they click around, and eventually they click on their, you know, they're they're encouraged to to conduct an activity, which actually, when they click on it, takes them outside of the LMS to a uh, uh, to a uh, what we call a, a, a tool provider, uh, and that really establishes another session, an inner session. 
Uh, so we can pass that information along as well, that sort of out, outer outbound session, uh, as well as information relative to whatever the current context is. So starting from a very sort of like simple, um, simple event um, within Caliper, you can actually construct a, um, an event that's quite rich in terms of the contextual information that you that you would want to uh, that you'd want to send down um, the uh, the event stream for for later evaluation. Any any questions there? There, there was a question. Um, yes. Is there uh, an LRS implementing Caliper support at the moment? Amongst the commercial amongst the commercial providers at present, uh, the answer as of today, I would I'd say is no. Um, we do have interest, uh, at least expressed to me um, from um, uh, from Learning Locker, uh, for example, that they're interested in implementing Caliper. Um, I haven't checked back to see if they've begun to do so. Our friends at uh, Rustacy Software, so the Kin Tin Can folks, um, who were at the uh, the recent um, the recent IMS quarterly meeting in Utah, in which we we talked about XAPI and Caliper, they're also um, they're also actually interested in um, in in integrating um, Caliper into their into their products. Uh, the Open LRS, the Aperio um, the Aperio uh, record store, we at the University of Michigan uh, have actually um, added a Caliper service, and then I believe that Gary Gilbert at at, at Unicon has also been working on. On um, on equipping it so that it can in, it can efficiently ingest caliper events as well. So let's move on, um, and we'll talk just a little bit about the um, give you an understanding of the of the API. Sorry, um, I, I wonder there's just a, a question coming in chat. Can okay. you see that? Can I see the question? Yeah. No, I can't. Okay. Um, going back a few caliper slides, it appears that profile info is part of the core triple. Uh, you show a video object as opposed to XAPI, which seems to have the core more abstract. Is this accurate? Was that? Did you? Was that yeah. okay? Did you get that? <laughs> yeah, Aaron. Um. I think it really depends on what you consider to be part, you know, how specific you need to be in terms of what's baked into the core, to the object. And I think it's really, that's really the, the aspect. Um, for example, within the object part is, you, know, you would bake in uh, the identifier, obviously, uh, the activity, and then you those, bake in that is a whole bunch of information about profile or profiles that may be referenced. Yeah. So uh, it is definitely abstract as is you know our whole concept to date of the approach towards doing profile. Um, and purposely so. So I guess that's a roundabout answer of saying yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean one thing is so from my perspective they're not um, the approach as to as regards the object of the interaction, um, I, I tend to regard them uh, both specs as similar, with the exception that uh, what's different is that while um, in 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 the case of XAPI, the um, the object of the interaction is either described as an activity, um, and an activity in this particular example, let you jump back to, um, is you can reference directly an open badge. As an object, with a reference to the to the badge class, if you want to look at the the open badge specification, so that's not any different than than um, a, for example, a caliper event uh, in which the object of their interaction is a is a video entity with a um, with a globally unique IRI associated with it, uh, with a globally unique identifier, um, similar. Um, similarly, uh, in the case of XAPI and Caliper, the object of the interaction could be another, could be an agent as well. Um, where they are different is, uh, in my in my opinion, is that um, at least currently, is XAPI 
object can also be a statement, can also be like a previous statement. So you could reference a previous statement as the object. Um, you can't do that currently in Caliper. So Caliper events right now are atomic. They really make no reference um, to, to other events um, within, within the body of the event itself. And there's, there's a distinguishing uh, characteristic between, the, uh, between the, both the statement and the event from the, from the perspective of the object. Right, so oh. let's jump to the API. Sure. So XAPI offers a pretty standard approach to doing APIs, or, or a standard, re the standard request that you would expect in terms of HTTP. Get, put, post, delete, those are all there. Now, there are a couple different resources uh, associated with an LRS's endpoint. The statement resource, for example, is where it accepts statements. Uh, that's really where statements are sent to. Um, and you'll note that statements don't, uh, they don't update, they don't update necessarily, and they certainly don't delete. Agents and you know agent profile that uh, that goes through the agent resource and uh, that really sends a metadata for about a personal group that is being an activity. The activity resource we provide the activity profile and that provides metadata pairings about activity. That we have a state resource, uh, and that supports sessioning. So the uh, e-learning context, you know, you, for example, your experience with the content may happen over several attempts. But each attempt, you may want to record state information in order to, you know, restore the user experience to the point in which they have progressed. One may encounter the experience of the same piece of content or the same activity. So that's really kind of a scratch pattern where one would store information to help restore that state. There's also an about resource, which uh, it, prov it provides you information about the version of the spec, uh, of the spec being adopted uh, in the LRS. But Probably more interestingly, provides you a, a, a list of extensions that are that are supported. The uh, the caliper sensor um, caliper sensor is actually um, simpler than um, ours. I, let's not call it simpler. No, it's less well developed than the uh, than the XAPI APIs. And and I should say it's the plural. Um, we um, we at this present uh, the sensor itself has a couple methods: a send method for sending events, uh, another method uh, that we call describe, which allows one to actually um, send entities or information about you know the individual objects uh, that uh, um, that may be in play. So, for example, I could send information about a uh, a particular assessment. I'm starting an assessment, but I, but I drop a describe in, which sends that information about the assessment. My subsequent events could actually be um, shaped uh, and, uh, and just contain references to the assessment. So my payload could actually be smaller. I will say that um, within the Calper community, the, uh, the orchestration of the event stream at this time uh, is still very, uh, very much in the experimental phase. I don't know of, of many implementers who are actually really leveraging the the uh, the describe method, uh, but anyways, uh, caliper caliper uh, events right now are just simply uh, emitted over HTTPS. Um, right now, we just really leverage posts. So the send and describe is a post. Uh, unlike XAPI, we have yet to um, extend the API so that you know you could perform a get on the event store. We we make no prescription. 
there's no description within the specification itself of how you interact with the event store um, after um, events are emitted to it. That will probably, I expect, will come uh, in time. So from, from again, from that standpoint, our, our, uh, our API is less well-developed than, uh, than um, the X API one, but it is moderated and deliberately so um, by the, um, uh, the mechanism of the, of the various profiles. This slide, um, again, is an awfully busy slide. It's less busy if it was, uh, if I could float this keynote, which I can't. And I'm gonna really sort of skip over this, uh, but what I wanted to um, just highlight is that we, and working with the um, our LTI work group, uh, sibling work group, we have um, worked in a, a process in which we can actually leverage LTI launches to send information um, relative to um, uh, caliper endpoints. Uh, we've, we're developing a caliper profile service, if you're familiar with uh, the way that LTI is, is designed, and also a, a separate key service. The, um, and really, at the end of the day, what all these arrows really, really point to, with the, given the sort of three actors in this scenario, is that event stream Really what we're doing is we're sending information to that tool provider to, to inform it and instruct it and order it to emit an event stream towards a target endpoint. And again, from the standpoint of the University of Michigan and, and other institutions within the, uh, within the IMS membership, that's, that's the critical aspect of, of this, this workflow. It's getting our data back, sending instructions to tool providers um, that have been instrumented with, uh, with a caliper sensor uh, with instructions as to where to send the data back so that we can then uh, merge it and combine it. And so this is a, a pretty useful mechanism um, where we're able to piggyback off an existing uh, caliper, I mean, an existing um, IMS specification. So um, we just have a couple minutes left, in fact, like one minute or so, and I just wanted to talk quickly about, you know, there is talk of, uh, of, of convergence. Is it, is it possible to affect convergence between these two specifications? Uh, and I just got a couple slides on that. There, there are challenges um, from, both, uh, from both my perspective and Aaron's, um, and those challenges are around the culture and the governance models uh, between the two committee, communities, uh, IP and licensing. licensing. Uh, XAPI features uh, an open development model where uh, the IMS community is, is really a gated development model. And then of course, as you've seen, there are some differences between the data model uh, and also the exchange formats, uh, the use of, uh, of uh, JSON-LD uh, in the Caliper community is a, something of a differentiator uh, between us and XAPI, and, and again, um, adds, adds to differences. Are there any other uh, uh, challenges that you want to highlight, Aaron? No, uh, just to kind of draw, just to kind of, again, kind of draw, draw the, I would say the, some of the important takeaways here. Um, from a, from a culture perspective, XAPI is open, and by open, I mean not, not just as an open source, although it certainly is. Uh, it's the idea of, you know, we're, one of the things that we've looked at profiles for uh, much the same way that, some of the same ways that uh, Caliper is using them, uh, but for more, I would say, a more, I would say, a scoped domain. Is that you know the ways in which we can extend XAPI and modify it are not just by versioning the spec; it's also by a more emergent network approach in terms of like defining here's how we want to apply XAPI to this specific domain. with others, you know, per perhaps even with other systems, um, and in doing so, if we find people are adopting XAPI in a certain way, like that gives us an indication of like how to progress the spec. You know? That doesn't necessarily require everybody to break with continuity. Particularly with IP and licensing, obviously, like you know, we're you know, XAPI being open source is, is freely available for folks to just pick up and use. Um, to 
IMS has a, has a, a different model, and for you know, a number of reasons. How it is? Is how does they help you? Um, but yeah, these are challenges. They're not necessarily deal breakers in any way of how they unify the spec. But I think a pragmatic approach is that that's not something that we're, that either community is ready to. On the next slide, though, there are opportunities that we can take advantage of right now. It would be there are very straightforward and easy enough to do, which would get us a lot of the net benefits of, you know, at least get us closer to that kind of convergence. Um, Anthony identified a few of these. Establishing the linkages between verb and, and, and equivalent action. Um, also describe, you know, you know, how do we establish linkage, linkages between common profiles that we practice have a video. There's certainly a link to be made with a metric profile. There. Um, and then there's the, you know, just the nuts and bolts of how do we how do we uniformly exchange data between different You're breaking up, Aaron. Mappings of our statement structure. Do you want to expand on any of that? Yeah, no, just that you were breaking up just a little bit. Uh, yeah, so really as far as the opportunities go, so the, the first two are really looking at the two. Um, both both the information the caliper information model and then in particular uh some of the work that adl has has done recently that we that we referenced early relative to the you know the articulation of a of an adl uh xapi controlled vocabulary um also as as you saw there were a variety of profiles of recipes that um uh, that that folks in the xapi community have been working on that there's a certain overlap between some of those um, some of those activity design activities and what has taken place within the the world of caliper, um, there seems to me there ought to be opportunities in which uh, we may be able to um, find uh, sort of common ground between the, between that work and perhaps establish uh, more generic profiles that uh, then that if of course we can develop a you know sort of data exchange mappings we have these common profiles that. If you want to admit it in a caliper format or admit it in an XAPI format, this is how you do it. I think these are opportunities that uh, you know that are available to us um, today. Uh, that if there, you know, if there's the will and the interest, uh, you know, this is this is things that we could we could start working on. Um, that uh, I don't think that the, the sort of some of the challenges that we that we uh, suggested earlier, um, you know, would would prevent. Uh, there may be. There may be other um, there may be other strategies that we can take as well, and, and maybe we can discuss that in the in the questions. Uh, but these um this is really uh, uh, this really brings our presentation to a close. Uh, and uh, I wanted to see if there are any final questions um, or issues that people um, issues or suggestions that people wanted to raise in the call before we um, we close out the the uh, the webinar. And Patrick, you'll have to tell me if there are, there are questions because I can't see them. Thanks. It looks like there are no questions. I feel like, um, oh, nope, they're thanks. Um, so I, I don't think there are any questions. I, I'd like to... Um, to thank Anthony and Aaron uh, on behalf of everybody here. That's been a fantastic presentation. I've certainly learned lots from that. Um, uh, and there are people asking about um, connecting with you, Anthony, uh, further about this. And lots of people want to watch uh, the recording. Okay. So. What I can, uh, what what we'll do, Patrick? Um, uh, I will send you a copy of the uh, of this presentation. Um, 
in, in a key, start in a keynote format in a PDF format I can I can send a uh, I can send a PowerPoint as well but some of the slides will be jacked up um, and then you guys are are welcome to um, uh, to disseminate those slides to the people on the call and uh, and they can use them as they as they will uh, I hope they get some benefit out of that and I and I hope too that um, this uh, this presentation has proved at least uh, moderately um, uh, constructive as well as interesting and perhaps even thought provoking and and hopefully uh, those on the call uh, will take some time to um, to approach both specifications to look to see what they have to offer and perhaps thinking about uh, ways that you might be able to, um, uh, to to pilot them or to prototype them or even or even to become in you know uh, engaged in the in the actual process of uh, of enhancing these uh, and both of these specifications and 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 then finally engaging in the in the wider conversation about uh, about possibilities around uh, interoperability between the two specs integrations and maybe even convergence. So I want to thank everybody and and particularly Aperio as well as uh, uh, Aaron, my co-presenter, uh, for affording us this uh, this opportunity to talk to you about uh, about these two specifications. So thanks a lot. Thanks to you. Thanks very much. Take care.